All right, folks, let's talk torch height controller, shall we? So I'm running a Harbor Freight uh, titanium garbage 45. Okay, let's see if I can get you here. All right, so if you buy the Proma MyPlasm CNC uh, controller, uh, at least in most of the cases I looked at it, it comes with the torch height controller, which, you know, I expected the torch height controllers to be, you know, cheap, relatively, 100 bucks, something like that. Uh, come to find out, no, they're pretty dang expensive, um, which to me just adds to the value of the Proma MyPlasm uh, CNC controller when you... Add in the fact that it comes with the torch height controller, um, it it really becomes a good value at four hundred fifty dollars. Um, by the way, Promos commented on a few of my videos, and uh, just to make it clear, they are not sponsoring me. I uh, they've given me nothing. They're paying me nothing to talk about them. I've just had really good luck with them, and as long as I waited to build this plasma table, uh, mainly because I was afraid of the wiring and the electronics on it. Um, their controller really, really made it a whole lot easier. But, um, so let's talk about wiring. It looks like a lot going to it. It's really not. Uh, these four wires right here uh, simply run straight to the controller. So uh, there's a positive, an A, a B, and a negative. And uh, that's all there is to that and the same same markings and plug on the cnc controller up there so that stuff's pretty easy um when you get over to this side these first two wires right here uh these are your your trigger wires and that's relatively easy to find um there's multiple places to tap in and get these wires uh but basically what i did was took the uh, torch cable off and you've got your main center pin and then you've got a couple of little pins going around it uh, I would basically find two that are together close you know next to each other and use a voltmeter and switch it over to ohms or continuity and pull the trigger and uh, you, when you pull the trigger and the voltmeter you know starts beeping tells you you got continuity that's your trigger wires plain and simple there's nothing more that is all there is to it now, um, the big one that really worried me and seems to uh, be a big focal point and not a lot of information, it's about as clear as mud on the internet, is the raw arc voltage. And put simply, it's basically like connecting to the, well, on plasma it's backwards, but the, your earth clamp, which is your positive side, and your uh, your ground clamp or your 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 torch, which I believe is the negative side. I could be backwards on that, but either way, you're basically one connected to the ground clamp or earth clamp, and one connected to the torch. That's all you're trying to do is make that connection. Um, it's hard to find the information on the internet, especially with all the different plasma cutters that are out there. Um, I can't remember there there is uh there's one that I found somewhere that had a I think it was the hypertherm and they said it was really similar to the titanium as far as the wiring in it but essentially um I found where the wire there's two wires that came off of the plug back here that were the raw arc voltage um they came off from the center pin and then one ran over to the earth clamp and they came together in some sheathing and ran up to a board right here on this side and plugged into the, the main circuit board. All I did was unplug it to give myself some room and T-tapped into it right there. Um, it really is as simple as that. But some machines... Um, especially some eBay and Scamazon um, Chinese plasma cutters have a voltage divider built into them, i.e. they are C uh, CNC capable, CNC ready, and they'll have a plug on the back side of the machine like a, a two-pin or a four-pin plug or multiple of those plugs, 
and uh, there'll be paperwork involved in there that tells you, you know, this is the um, arc voltage going through a voltage divider at 50 to 1 or 20 to 1 or whatever the case is. Um, you don't have to use the voltage divider. You can still go in and tap and get the raw arc voltage. Um, but supposedly it's better to use a voltage divider if you can. So if you have that option, great. If you don't, well, uh, raw arc voltage is the way to go. I expected, you know, you're cutting half inch steel plate and, you know, there would be significant voltage there. Uh, no, I think mine runs, um, I want to say when I've got this thing cranked all the way up at, at uh, 45 amps, I want to say it's running 126 volts, I think. I haven't cut really cranked all the way up very much um, with it. As, as far as with the CNC, it's all been eighth inch or smaller. Um, so I'm running right, right at 100 volts. Uh, so I expected it to be more. It wasn't. Um, as far as this uh plasma interface or torch height controller it also has a interface for the touch control so that it knows uh how far or how high it is off the metal um i ran for quite a bit without that because i couldn't figure out how to get it working um if you notice i got a blue wire here attached and it literally is just zip tied uh to the cape to the uh, torch cable and runs all the way up torch cable all the way up to the torch and tried to just make a ring out of Romex that goes around the, the head of the torch and then comes up, connects to this wire. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, for whatever reason, I could never make it work. I, I guess I didn't understand it. Um, finally, I tried. I said, okay, let's try something different. Uh, one of the things I was, I was missing was you have to have a direct ground... Um, basically grounding this to the workpiece up top so your your uh, your whatever plate you're cutting on or whatever steel you're cutting on now you probably could have just ran a uh, a ground cable right here and grounded the actual table itself um, but uh, you know the ohmic sensing is supposedly uh let's say unreliable as far as it's got uh, issues with if the plate gets wet or if there's any rust or corrosion on the steel and it's not making good contact uh they say that's one of the downfalls to the ohmic sensing so what i did was just ran uh this little wire and put it on a clamp and basically set it right next to my plasma cutter clamp and that is for the ohmic sensing and then I'll take you around. So, hmm, let's get y'all the light. Um, after trying a couple of things, I'm trying to get this thing figured out. Um, I finally got it working right, and man, I wish I would have figured it out a long time ago because it does make it so much nicer. Uh, cutting on thin steel and it warping as bad as it does it warping as bad as it does um, it really is an issue so this is that blue wire that goes in for the ohmic sensing now originally this is just a piece of stripped out actually it's a ground uh, the ground cable out of a sheet of Romex because I think it was 14 gauge Romex so originally I had this run down and I actually had it wrapped around the tip itself um, <laughs> when I did that, it was, once I hooked the ground up to the table, um, it started, it basically showed like it was touching the plate all the time. I don't know why, um, I, mean, I still don't fully understand it, but uh, when I separated it and just dropped it down and ran just to basically a little stick off of it, just, just right next to the head, uh, now it works fine. So... Basically, it'll make a cut, say, right here, and then if it has to go two foot across the table and start the next cut, before it makes the next cut, it's going to come down and touch the table and know exactly what height it's at. Uh, so if there's any warping or anything like that, no worries. It, uh, it'll pick up that warp, and it'll still pierce at the right height, 
it'll drop down and start cutting at the right height and then use the arc voltage to maintain that cut all the way throughout it. Um, this was a, a pretty big upgrade. I can't believe I didn't figure it out before now, but definitely play with this. The information that's out there on the internet is about as clear as mud. Um, I don't know what else to say besides, man, it's, it really is, it, I guess I was overthinking it. It really is that simple. Um, I have had no issues with grounding. Of course, I'm using pretty much new, uh, you know, mill plate. I've got a big sheet of 3 8 that sits outside. It's kind of rusty. Um, that's going to be coming in here. I got something I got to cut off of it. And uh, that's going to be a test. We're going to see how well it works with that. But um, other than that, yeah, that's... I wish I'd have figured that out a long time ago. Um, but definitely... Uh, awesome thing to have and consider this when you're looking at whether you're going to run gerbil and um, a um, oh, Arduino um, you know by the time you buy those boards and then you fight with all the software and all that kind of stuff you still got to have a torch height controller you you may build a plasma table and run it for a very short while without a torch height controller, but your work is going to be so inconsistent. Um, and basically, with a torch height controller, if this metal warps during cut from heat and starts to bubble up, the torch automatically rides that hill up. Um, if you don't have a torch control controller, torch height controller, your torch head's going to either run into the metal causing you issues uh, or it's going to get too far away from it and not cut this is just a, a, a control a height controller is just a must-have um, so I, I do believe chroma offers the matter of fact i know they do offers a torch height controller by itself um, and there's a couple other companies out there that have them but uh it was a lot easier to hook up than what I was expecting. I was afraid of it having to open up my plasma cutter and find all that information because there is not a lot of information on the internet as far as how to find the raw arc voltage and so forth, so on. I would open mine up and show you physically where I connected it. <clears throat> but um, I've got everything, the wire so short and everything so tight in there that it's just going to be a pain. Um, I do have plans in the future to upgrade, or I wouldn't even say upgrade. I want to change that plasma cutter. I want that plasma cutter down there to go back on my welding cart, and I want to buy one that has CNC controls coming out the back of it with a voltage divider. Um, when I get to that point and I upgrade uh, plasma cutters, I will definitely video changing, you know, pulling the cover off of that one, showing you where I, I tapped into the raw arc voltage. Uh, and so forth so on and how I hook up to the new one and figure out what goes where but until that 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 fact uh, or until that time um, yeah it's just try to give you as much as I can I, I'm happy to offer any answer any questions that I can about it um, but it's really it's not it's not near as hard as you would think it is um, I overthought it and it worried me, scared me, so forth, so on. It's not hard. You have a couple of LED lights on here that will blink and actually give you uh, indications on uh, what's going on with it. Uh, it does have um, it does have uh, inputs. If you have a um, yeah. Okay, you have ohmic sensing, which is touch sensing, and then you have um, a floating head, which basically it's sitting like this, and once the torch tip touches there, it lifts the head off and breaks continuity and tells it, you know, that that's the tabletop. Um, I'd like to build a floating head, but it's, it's just not in the cards right now. Uh, I'm trying not to add any more weight to this than I have to. Um, also, if you're thinking about building one of these, I put a lead screw on this, which I can't, yeah, I can't remember for sure, but one rotation gives me like 
five millimeters or something like that. So basically it's a heavy, heavy, heavy gear reduction on the Y axis. And um, Proma commented on one of my videos and basically they told me that's why the, as far as my steps on a previous video were at 400 on the Y axis, um, that's why it is. It, it doesn't with plasma, you need speed and uh not not torque and this lead screw is good for torque not speed um i will say there's plans to put a rack and pinion system up here but that's going to also require moving a stepper motor up here and adding more weight to the gantry itself um the lighter you can keep this gantry the better performance you're going to have out of the table uh you have uh ramp settings in the software and um the faster that ramp the more responsive the table and uh the just the better cut quality you're going to get that's why this is all running aluminum everything here is aluminum and even being aluminum i bet that gantry weighs oh sh i bet it weighs 150 pounds um that's not an exaggeration these two rails are extremely heavy the lead screw is very heavy. Um, this little Z-axis setup that I bought pre-done is got some weight to it, some heft to it. So um, try to keep your gantry as light as possible. The lighter, the better. I mean, yes, you want rigidity, but um, weight is definitely going to affect you. Uh, that is one reason that I went with the lead screw was because I thought the weight and didn't know the power of the stepper motors. Let me tell you, there's no shortage of power in the stepper motors. Um, when I was cheap and built the water table, I've only got runners every, I don't know, there's some that are a foot apart. So when I cut a deal here, it may fall in, leaving something kicked up that much. Well, that happened the other day. And traversing across, and it caught one of those deals. It tried to shove the plate off the table that way. Of course, it ran into this rail, and it's not going to move that. It actually sheared every bolt or screw off in this linear rail um i had to completely take this apart move the linear rail up redrill and tap but uh yeah it's got plenty of power you don't have to worry about power um worry about speed and light lightweight so i hope this is a little bit more information that helps you out um once again, you got any questions, man, drop them in the, in the doobly-doo below, and I will do my best to answer them. And until then, y'all have a good one.